This is part 58 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll wrap up this Blazor course. This course is around 7 hours and consists of 58 video clips. We've covered most of the Blazor concepts that help you build real-world Blazor applications. There are a few more important ASP.NET Core security concepts to cover. This course is already 7 hours long. The rest of the security concepts are going to take at least another 3 hours. So it makes sense to cover them in a separate ASP.NET Core security course. For Blazor application development, as far as machine setup is concerned, you need just these two softwares, Visual Studio 2019 and the .NET Core SDK 3.1 or later. We discussed how to download, install and set up both these softwares in detail in part 1 of this video series. You can find the complete source code of the project that we have built as part of this course at this URL. I'll have this link available both in the description of this video as well as on my blog. And here is the Blazor tutorial zip file. Click on it to download. I've already downloaded it onto my local machine. So right click on the zip folder and the first step to set up this project on our local machine is to extract the files. There we go. All the files are extracted. Open the solution folder and then let's open the Blazor tutorial solution with Visual Studio 2019. Even the community edition works just fine. As we downloaded this project from the internet, we get this security warning. Make sure you uncheck this checkbox. Otherwise, you're going to get the security alert for every project in the solution. And that's a bit annoying. There we go. Our solution is open and we have all the four projects loaded as expected. If we take a look at SQL Server Object Explorer, our application requires two databases and we don't see any of them here. So we need to execute database migrations and we do that from Package Manager Console. If you don't find Package Manager Console here, click on View, Other Windows and then Package Manager Console. Within the Package Manager Console window, select Employee Management.Web as the default project. This is our Blazor Server project. And then execute this command, update database. There we go, migration complete. Notice, now we have a new database and within this database, we have all the ASP.NET Core identity tables. We need to execute one more migration. This time, select employee management dot api as the default project and then execute the same command again update database there we go this migration is also applied notice now we have a new database employee db and within this database we have both employees and departments tables now let's run our project there we go our application is up and running we don't have a username to log in. So our first natural step is to register a new user. Registration complete. Click on this link to confirm the account. Now we can log in. There we go. Our application is up and running. You can find the complete Blazor course at this URL. You can find all the notes, slides and videos in sequence. Your feedback means a lot. If you've got a couple of minutes, please click on the reviews tab, provide your rating for the course and valuable feedback. What's next? Well, I'm thinking to start one of these courses. Please let me know what you want to learn next by leaving a comment on this video. Hearty congratulations on completing this course. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for listening and goodbye for now.